The year is 1940. The German war machine had cast a long shadow over Europe. Poland, Denmark, Norway, all had fallen under the Nazi heel. The world held its breath, yet a spark of resistance flickered. In occupied Norway, a tale of courage was about to unfold. A small band of Norwegian commandos against the Nazi war machine. At the heart of this struggle lay heavy water. To the Nazis, heavy water was vital for their atomic bomb. A different kind of race was underway. A race against time. The Allies knew they had to act. Their target, the Vemork hydroelectric plant. The task fell upon the Norwegian resistance and commandos. Their mission, infiltrate and disable the heavy water production facility. Heavy water, a seemingly innocuous term, held the key to unleashing unimaginable destruction. Unlike its more common counterpart, heavy water, scientifically known as deuterium oxide, possesses a unique atomic structure that made it invaluable to the Nazi nuclear program. German scientists, working feverishly in their labs, recognized its potential in facilitating nuclear fission, the process of splitting an atom's nucleus to release colossal amounts of energy. Heavy water, they discovered, acted as a crucial moderator in this process, slowing down neutrons and increasing the likelihood of a chain reaction, the very essence of an atomic bomb's power. The Vimork plant in Norway, with its access to abundant hydroelectric power, became the focal point of Germany's heavy water production. Each drop of heavy water produced brought the Nazi regime one step closer to realizing their deadly ambition. The Allies, through intelligence reports, grew increasingly alarmed by the progress being made at Vemork. The spectre of a Nazi Germany armed with nuclear weapons was a chilling prospect, one that could not be ignored. The race was on. The fate of the free world hinged on a desperate gamble a daring raid to strike at the very heart of the Nazi nuclear program. The target, the heavy water production facility at Vimork, the objective sabotage, the hope to buy precious time and cripple the enemy's ability to unleash atomic fury upon the world. The task of disrupting the Nazi heavy water production fell upon the Norwegian resistance movement and a select group of highly trained commandos from the British Special Operations Executive, known as SOE. These were not ordinary soldiers. These were men forged in the crucible of war, masters of stealth, sabotage and survival. Among them was Joachim Ronneberg, a young Norwegian officer with a steely resolve. Forced to flee his occupied homeland, Ronneberg refused to stand idly by. He volunteered for the perilous missions of the SOE, determined to liberate Norway. The plan to sabotage the Vermork plant, codenamed Operation Gunnerside, was audacious and intricate. The plant's isolated location in a mountainous region presented both a challenge and an opportunity. The Germans, confident in the natural defences, deemed the plant impregnable. The Allied planners saw a way in. They devised a daring two-pronged approach. First, an advanced team would gather intelligence. Then, under darkness, Ronneberg's team would strike the heavy water facility. The stage was set for one of the most daring sabotage missions of the war. On a bitterly cold February night, under the pale glow of a wintry moon, Operation Gunnerside commenced. Joachim Ronneberg and his team of Norwegian commandos their faces hardened against the biting wind, parachuted into the desolate, snow-covered wilderness of the Norwegian highlands. Their journey was fraught with peril. They navigated treacherous ravines, scaled sheer ice cliffs, their every step a battle against exhaustion and the unforgiving elements. The threat of detection was constant. German patrols, their eyes peeled for any sign of resistance activity, roamed the area. One misstep, one wrong turn could spell disaster for the mission and certain death for the commandos. After days of gruelling travel, they finally reached their objective, the heavily guarded Vimort plant. The sight of the imposing structure, its windows glowing ominously in the darkness, did little to ease the tension that gripped the men. Their objective lay within those walls, the heavy water production facility, the heart of the Nazi nuclear ambitions, now, the true test of their courage and skill was at hand. They had infiltrated the enemy stronghold. The success of Operation Gunnerside, 
The fate of the free world rested on their ability to remain undetected, to strike with precision, and to escape with their lives.